What's this? I had a box. I went through it. I said, Gene, I'm going to toss this. this. He pulled that out. Says, you don't want to toss this. Terminator. Two. Judgment Day. Wow. Original wow. script. Huge movie. Blockbuster. It says Gene Warren, Leslie Huntley, Fantasy 2, Film Effects. Gene Warren's our father. Dear Gene and Leslie, per your conversation with Jim, I am sending a script. Pretty personalized script. Oh, yeah. Our father did the stop motion puppets for the Terminator. These guys were doing the visual effects in that. Crazy. Anytime you saw it walking full body, toe to head, stop motion puppet. Two different scales, because T1 was six scale. And then when we did T2, Jim goes, big difference. You got more money, make bigger minutes. So is that something you'd sell? Yeah. This is an original script that is personalized to his father. I mean, what would you have to have for that? The bigger the picture, the bigger the price. There's T2 pieces that sold for a quarter of a million dollars. Really? Yeah. So three to five hundred dollars? Probably worth maybe double that on an auction or something. To the right auction, yeah. Yeah. It's so hard to find an original script next to impossible, but here is one that's personalized. So there's two stories colliding there. This is an incredible piece. Three to five, 400? 400 it is. All right. Deal to both right, of you. Thank yeah. you, buddy. I appreciate it. 400 bucks. Check it out, Robbie. Right on. Yeah, really? This is our father's house. My brother and I now have it. What year was the house built? 1926. Wow. Really? Wow. Welcome to our home. Oh, Dean, Dean, cool. Dean, we've been selling stuff up there. What you doing? Hey, hey, hey what's going on? Hey, I'm Mike. Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Hi. I'm Gene. It's my brother, Robbie. Oh. Hi, Robbie. Good to meet you. We both, I think, ended up working with our father because we needed a job at a high school. It's not like we were growing up saying, oh, we want to be yeah, Not necessarily me. I, I took three years before I joined the business, knowing I wanted to get into it. But this business, you sell your soul. And I wasn't ready to sell which, my soul yet. Which I did jump right into it. And three years later, I quit for a decade because I realized I hadn't had my fun yet. So I went out and had my fun for 10 years and then got back into I it. I saw it coming. I said, no way, Dad, I'm not doing this. But growing up in the business and being a part of it and being around it, I knew this is what I wanted to do. Pillsbury Doughboy stuff. This is a uh, replacement animation heads. These have all of the vowels and the consonants. For him to talk, you didn't try to animate the mouth. You made 16, 20 heads with different mouth shapes. And so you just replaced the head to get him to say something. When he needed to make, uh, like me, you started with an M. Oh, and You took for the him. head off, oh, wow. then you put the E part no on kidding. it. No kidding, with every little every, every little of his sound, mouth, yeah. You had to change the head. Replacement off. animation. Wow. These are the heads that allowed the Pillsbury Doughboy to speak. This is a series of, uh, you know, so like how many heads 16, are in here? 12, 16, something. Wow. Missing two from the collection. I don't know some, where those went. Cause, no, I do. I, when I was younger, I was in love and gave a doughboy to a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> the Pillsbury Doughboy has been around for so long, he's really a part of the American landscape. And what I mean by that is just like pop culture. Everyone knows the Pillsbury Doughboy. Here's where he's laughing. And we also have these doughboy things. What are those? We occasionally got to poke the doughboy. Yeah. You had to move that slowly. That's fast. <laughs> <laughs> and so because this typically looked like it was a rubber hand, they decided, OK, we're just going to do it with our kids and get real skin. Were you the one? Was it your finger? Both of us. My first job in the industry was poking the Pillsbury Doughboy at nine years old. And they set us up on something like this, and we had to go one frame at a time. They'd take a picture, they'd change the head, they'd wow. animate the body. We'd have to move another. So about 45 minutes it took us to go all the way in. What noise did he make? <laughs> The reason I'm drawn to all of these heads is because they're connected to each other. They're a variation on a theme. Let me see how these would even display. So there's 16 heads and one body. There's almost a complete set here. Now there's one missing due to the casualty of love. But other than that, I mean, it's all together. There's a lot of collectors out there that collect advertising, but this kind of takes it to the next level. I mean, that you have so many in a box and they're all different faces, then it, it becomes an art installation. What's the difference between this and Warhol's Campbell soup can? You know, over and over again, repetition, art, handmade, pop culture, all of that. This is the Pillsbury Doughboy's head over and over again with different movements of his mouth. The way they're displayed right now, it's already art. What are you guys thinking on this? 2,500? 
I know each individually it could be lotted out for a lot more money than that, but it's important for us that, that it, it stays. It has to stay together. And it has to stay together. Yeah. And, I, and the condition, he's got a little bit of a pug nose, there's a little bit of dent oh, on his right cheek. <sighs> 22. 2250? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, we love it. I mean, I never thought I'd get that excited about the Pillsbury Pillsbury Doughboy, Doughboy, but they're handmade, they're iconic. The way they're displayed transcends the commercial. It's an incredible piece. It's like a day-to-day -day treasure hunt. I'm out there looking for rusty gold. I'm looking for the unusual and impossible. It's back roads, it's dumpster diving, it's flea markets, it's people's homes.